last video we looked at how to customize our workspace and what we were doing was customizing our toolbars in particular and our palettes or our palette arrangement on the screen to really make our screen as big and as useful as possible. So we've done that now. I can just shrink that just a little tiny bit up there. This has got our info box and as soon as we select a tool this gives us the settings of those tools available. Now if I hover over that and then scroll that'll take me all the way through. Now that's really useful without having to go into the tool but sometimes it's not really um, helpful to find what we're looking for. It's not, I guess, in a good format. The, the reason why I do this most commonly is maybe with the door tool, scroll through to the end, and that allows me to change the door or window number. So once we start doing door and window schedules, having a door and window number is incredibly important. Otherwise, with any tool, just at the start of this info box, click on the tool again, and that'll bring up a wall default setting or default setting for whatever tool we're using and this is probably a much nicer way of understanding all of the the parts or the options available in the menu. Now different commands have different menu structures but this is a pretty good example of what we're talking about. So what are we going to do now? I want to explain to you quickly, again if you're brand new to Archicad, I'm, I'm assuming that, that this is you, how Archicad works, how the system works, and how you should ideally best use Archicad. Now, we've talked a little bit about the navigator. Let's just understand this in a bit more detail. If we right click on the stories, we're in our project map view, story settings, we see that Archicad is built on multiple stories or levels. And what that means is we're dealing with a 3D environment, but unlike something like AutoCAD, we can choose to break up our 3D environment, our 3D world, which is infinitely large, into multiple levels, which works really well, of course, for architectural purposes, meaning that we can have stories that relate to our project. Now, we're going to customize this, and we're going to create this as a template. When we're creating these, I would recommend that you never go into the negatives, into the minuses. So we're just going to delete all of these and start again, just because we can. We're going to start with one at the bottom, and I'm going to call this AHD. Sorry for that. AHD, what's that stand for? Australian Height Datum. If you can't tell by my accent, I'm living in Australia. And therefore, I'd use this. I could also write survey. So I'm going to get for every project that I would do, I'd get a survey from a land surveyor. And that would give me the site details. It would give me land contours or topographical information, and I'd be able to trace that or import that or even explode that to be able to use for a project. Now, what's the elevation of that? I'm going to keep that at zero at the moment, and height to next doesn't really matter, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then I'm going to always go insert above, not insert, sorry, insert above, not insert below. Insert above. What's this going to be? Terrain. What's terrain? We could call it earth. But this is the site, we could call it site, on which my building stands. Now I'm not going to worry about these settings, these height settings at the moment. I'm just going to keep inserting and then we're going to have a look at um, why we might make settings particular heights after. What's above that? Now this is where it starts to become a little bit customized, which in relationship to your project. And what's your project? You know, it will vary. For the project that I'm working with my students on at the moment, this first level will be basement. Above that, we might have ground floor, we might have lower ground floor. Now on a sloping site, what you'll probably find is you have multiple grounds, ground levels. That can make it tricky. For now, we'll just call this ground floor, not to over-confuse you. Above that will be our first floor and above that will be our roof. You'll note that I don't have any ceiling stories. When, again, when I started Archicad, we used to have, back in my day, we used to have ceiling stories or floor structure um, stories where we'd create additional stories to put ceiling information or put floor structure information. But the problem with that is it makes our drawings harder later, particularly if we're trying to create something like a reflected ceiling plan. Because ideally, our reflected ceiling plan should just be our ground floor or our first floor just with different 
layers. So we're going to talk about the difference between stories and layers, and that's really the most important premise of how ARCHICAD differs to something like AutoCAD if you've used it in the past. Now, what do we set our terrain earth elevation to? We set it to whatever the survey says. So if we're maybe doing something near the coast, we might have a AHD of 10 meters. Now, of course, we're always going to write this in millimeters. If we're doing a building up in, uh, say, the Blue Mountains, we might be 400 meters above sea level. So I'm always going to adjust my AHD in order to be able to show the terrain. I'm actually doing this wrong. Zero. I could add a number here if I wanted to. I'm going to add into my height to next terrain whatever I should be above the ground. Maybe that's 10,000. Maybe that's 100,000. Maybe that's 400,000. But we'll do 10,000 for now. 10 meters above uh, our sea level or Australian height datum. Now for each story, how high is your story to story settings? Is it three meters? Is it three and a half meters? I don't know. Depends on your project. We're just going to make it three meters now to make it really simple. Three meters. I'm, and you'll note that I'm always changing height to next. I'm never changing elevation. I'm letting that happen automatically and that just stops me from getting mucked up with my numbers and then finally height to next there is nothing above the roof but I still need to add a number if I make that zero it's gonna be very difficult for me to draw anything on that story so we're just gonna do three meters as a nice standard round number and when I'm finished press OK and that will change those settings now because I started by deleting it it's freaking out a little bit because if I'd already drawn things on those stories and I deleted them all that information would disappear. Thankfully, ARCHICAD gives us this warning when we're about to do really dumb stuff. There we go. We see that the story settings have automatically changed. Uh, a few videos ago, we originally had elevation and section markers, and I deleted those. So we see that the stories folder has all the different stories we've got it in. We could also call this floor plans, but stories is a more accurate representation. Sections, elevations, interior elevations, they're all empty because we haven't created them. Now worksheets already has these things in here. What are worksheets? Worksheets is another environment, but it's a 2D environment and it's not at all linked to our 3D environment. So we can put things in here that we don't necessarily want to show in our 3D model. So what's this? It's a, it's a drawing scale or a graphic scale that ARCHICAD's created for us. Now the pen colors are a little bit awkward, so I'm not going to probably keep those. I'm going to have a look at how to change those later. But this might be a really good tool to have on your title block. What's next? It's a title block that ARCHICAD's created. This is an A, what do they call this one? An A1 horizontal. And then the next one is an A1 vertical. Now of course you could resize these so they're A3. And you can edit these or you can create your own. But it's great that we've got these as a standard to work with. And then finally we see there's this one here called Site Survey. You'll see that they've put this in a worksheet. What I'm suggesting that you might want to do is actually put this on a story. Again, they've created a place for it. Doesn't mean you need to use it. I will delete it. Just to minimize the amount of stuff I've got here. Now I could go and delete all those, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. Details, we see that that one's empty as well because we create details based on our 3D model. If we go, if we reduce our design, we can see that under document, we have our detail tool and then our 3D document tool. We've already created these. What are these? This is a really fantastic tool. That's hours. What's it talking about? Sun shadows pretty much. When we're doing sun shadows, it's of our building model, and we're going to be testing our sun shadows for most projects during our March. March is our autumn solstice. June, this is, sorry, um, equinox, sorry, our March or our autumn equinox, our June winter solstice, our spring equinox and our summer solstice. So summer, longest day of the year, winter, shortest day of the year, March and September, sort of the average days of the year. So that will tell us in two ways, how much we're maybe overshadowing our neighbors. Uh, it could also potentially show us 
how much sun we're getting into our spaces, but I'd be less likely to use a 3D document to do that. I'd be more likely to create a sun study for that, and we find that under document, creative imaging, create sun study. Uh, I've done a lot of these videos before. You can check out on my YouTube channel. Um, otherwise, you can um, have a look, and I'll probably do another one soon with version 21. So that's explaining our navigator. I've probably talked for long enough again, so I'll probably shut up now and we'll stop this video. And then in the next video, we're going to have a look at our options, element attributes, what these mean, and how we could customize them, uh, but what we have to be very careful of if we're going to customize them.